President Trump and Joe Biden preparing for the first 2020 presidential debate. Mary Bruce is there in Cleveland with much more on what we can expect. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Robin. Well, we have never seen a debate like this before. There will be no handshakes, no opening statements, and just a limited socially distanced audience. Just over a month left to go, and tonight we could see the sharpest contrast yet. This morning, the candidates just hours away from coming face to face for the first time in this race, and already the gloves are off. Guy, a dumb guy. Always known as a dumb guy. Look, the people know the president's a liar. I mean, they know that. Uh, it's not like it's uh, um, it going to come as a surprise to them. Hanging over tonight's debate, those questions about the president's taxes. After that stunning report from the New York Times alleging Trump paid just $750 in federal income tax in 2016, the year he won the White House. That same year, in a debate with Hillary Clinton, Trump took credit for avoiding taxes. The only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license, and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero, that means zero for troops. Trump's taxes and business record are sure to be in Biden's crosshairs tonight, but the former vice president is also bracing for Trump to go personal. He's going to want to make it personal. He's going to want to get in the mosh pit. I'm going to talk about why I want to be president of the United States. The official topics for tonight's debate include both Biden and Trump's records, the economy, the Supreme Court, race and unrest, and the pandemic. Biden has been off the trail preparing, but Trump, he's been campaigning full steam, keeping up a packed schedule with nine events in just the last week. He says his job is prep enough. How many hours would you say you've spent on well, debate prep? A it? little time. I mean, not a lot. More or less than 16. I'm, I'm running the country. I'm, I don't, you know, I don't have the luxury. But he's still trying to downplay expectations. He's been doing it for 47 years, and I've just started doing this stuff. Biden heads into tonight's debate with a 10-point lead in national polls. He's also up in several key battleground states, like Pennsylvania, where our latest ABC News Washington Post poll out this morning shows Biden up by nine points. Biden is also familiar with this setting. He has done 26 presidential and vice presidential debates, but, George, he has never faced an opponent like Donald Trump. Okay, Mary, thanks very much. Let's bring in Chris Christie and Rahm Emanuel from our political team. And Chris, let me begin with you. You wrote that the president's debate prep back in 2016, which you were a part of, was something of a disaster. You've also been part of it this time around. How has it gone? What does the president need to do? Well, listen, what the president needs to do tonight is essentially two things. Um, the first is to lay out his vision um, for the next four years and what he wants to do for the American people if he's given a second term. And secondly, he has to differentiate what his vision is from Joe Biden's vision based upon their campaign and based upon Joe Biden's record. And I think you'll see both of those things happen tonight. Um, the president hasn't debated in four years, um, but I don't think he'll have any problem when he gets on the stage tonight. And Rom, you were closely with Joe Biden in the White House when you were President Obama's chief of staff. What's his big job tonight? What's the most dangerous trap he faces? <laughs> I think Joe Biden's got to reassure the American people. That's a different mission than Donald Trump, which has to change people's impression of both him and his presidency after three and a half years. And Chris has always noted that the president has to lay out his agenda. We're 37 days away from his, uh, the election, and he still hasn't done that, so I don't hold much hope for that. I do think one of the things is Joe Biden goes into this with a little uh, tailwind, where the president goes in with a headwind. And the reason is all the polls are showing him up eight, nine, ten points, depending on also not only nationally, but as your recent poll here in Pennsylvania, also the other day, the uh, New York Times had a poll, same, same number, showing a state that's moving away. And all of these are starting to see a tick up since the Supreme Court. And I think that's noted because I think a lot of these Biden Republicans are not happy with this kind of power grab. And I do think when the attack comes, and it will come personal, Joe Biden needs to say, deflect it with, look, I can say a lot about your family. You can say whatever you want about my family, but that has nothing to do with the American family. And, and Chris, we're here to talk about their family and their future. Chris Christie, the, you know, the, the New York Times tax story, obviously a big wild card coming in to this debate, likely to be uh, the first question or one of the first questions. And the president's had a couple of different answers to it. How does he handle tonight? Well, I, I think, you know, from reading the story that came out this morning, George, I, I think it's a lot of old news. 
Uh, and I think that's the way the president will deal with it. I think the president said two things uh, four years ago about his taxes. One, that he would release his taxes after his audit was done. Um, there had always been skepticism, I think, among the media and others about that. But the Times reporting actually confirms that that audit is still ongoing, has been ongoing for about a decade uh, without resolution by the IRS. And secondly, um, the president has said that he worked hard when he was in the private sector to pay as little in taxes as he possibly could and followed the law. And there's really no allegations in that New York Times story that he did anything to break the law. Joe Biden was part of making those tax laws over all the years that he was in the, in the Congress. Um, and so, you know, I think that the president should answer it that way and, and, and then move on to the other issues that I suspect will be much more of a concern um, to the people who will be sitting on their couches in their living rooms and listening tonight. They want to know about their futures and what taxes they'll be paying over the next four years rather than what taxes the president may have paid over the last 20. We will see it all tonight. You'll both be part of our special primetime coverage. I'll be anchoring uh, starting at 8 o'clock with an hour of pre-debate reporting, pre reporting and analysis. And then we'll have the debate at 9 with post-debate analysis at 1030. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the morning on GMA.